Welcome to the Gwen Developer Stream. My name is Pavel Buzha and I'm joined, as always, well, recently, as always, by Maciej Ostrowski. Hey. Hey, man. How are you? Oh, doing great. Doing great. See, weather, good weather is back. Everything is great. And we have an exciting stream for you. Uh, we'll oh, yeah. be talking about the upcoming update, which is coming tomorrow, which is very, very, we probably know that it's coming tomorrow because the season <laughs> ends tomorrow. But yeah, still, it's yes. exciting. It's great. Uh, but before we jump into talking about the changes that will come with patch 2.1, which is the one that is coming tomorrow. We have something special. We have something special and it's a video from Jason Slama himself. So let's just roll the tape. Hey everyone, uh, Jason Slama here, Game Director for Gwent, and I thought it was time to catch up a bit with what we plan for the future of Gwent, and I wanted to take a bit out of our time to, to share that with you. Uh, there's a lot to talk about today, and you know, bear with me, it's gonna be some exciting things to talk about. The first thing I wanna talk about is uh, the new user experience. Uh, a lot of you have commented that the starter decks aren't really great, and we agree. We feel there's too many neutrals, they're not really showing off uh, the different variety of factions and, and the depth that is in the game, and so uh, coming in the next month uh, or two is going to be a complete redesign of the starter decks to really show that off. Uh, it should be really uh, much more faction heavy, a lot less neutral heavy, and, and give you a lot of potential to start off, and they'll be quite competitive. Uh, the other thing is we know our tutorial uh, also does poorly in teaching you the experience and showing you how Gwent is really awesome. So we're also working really hard right now into redoing those two tutorials. It'll go down from six matches to three, but they'll be more condensed. They'll be teaching better. There'll be more moments of, of, of awesomeness and showing off some of the more cool cards we have in our game. So we're really hoping that between that and all the other new user experience chains we're doing, such as uh, intro videos for the, the starter decks to help you learn the flavor of each faction and, and how those decks really play to sort of more spending less time in handheld tutorials and more time uh, helping you figure out the rest of the game like deck building and all that stuff should really help you get your friends to play Gwent and enjoy it with you and uh, that's really important and we've heard you and, and, and we feel the same and we're definitely doing quite a lot coming soon for that. Uh, additionally, uh, I want to take some time to talk about uh, user experience in general. Now, let's start back to the last time we did sort of this roadmap stream, which was in December of last year. We talked that we were going to stop doing big changes. Yeah, we are going to stop trying to re, uh, re-update and fix all the user experience in one pass like we did with Homecoming. And we are going to go more iterative. And I feel like over the last few months, we've really managed to make the game feel smoother, feel faster, feel a lot more fun and, and responsive to play. But that was only the beginning. There's a lot more that we want to do to make the game feel and better and also like to be more intuitive. And there's a, there's a lot that we can talk about here already. Uh, coming really soon, or that's about to come out, is uh, Drag and Drop. So we've added in Drag and Drop into the game. I know that was one that you guys were requesting a lot. It was at the top of my list, and I'm super happy that it's finally coming. And in the process of doing Drag and Drop, we really took the time to try and refine the way the playing card experience works in the sense that it'll be much more clear what you can and can't do than ever before. Uh, another thing that we did in the same vein is right now when you go to play a card, the rows that you can actually play on will be highlighted. And the rows that, you know, a card is only, uh, a row in which the ability of a card only works, so like a melee restricted card will get highlighted much more prominently. So the chances of you playing that card in the wrong row uh, is going to diminish greatly, I hope, which was always driving me nuts. Uh, when, especially when learning the new cards in Homecoming. The things that we're still looking at and that I'm really excited for us to be start working on soon is, you know, when you play a card, trying to get that feeling of, of, of it really having impact, so that means more sounds, more VFX, and we even are thinking about adding variety into it so that, you know, a catapult doesn't make the same sounds or the same animations as, let's say, you know, uh, a dwarven warrior jumping into the battlefield. Yeah, we, we really want to get that battlefield feeling coming. I don't know exactly when that's coming, but it's definitely something that we're going to work in the near future on uh, to get your hands into. Uh, we're, we're, we're simplifying the UI. For example, the, the row scores is something that we don't feel you actually use most of the time, and it makes it harder to read the information that's important. So we're going to actually be hiding the row scores. Uh, you'll still be able to access them, but they won't always be visible, so the game will be a bit more readable. 
Uh, we're also looking into adding counters onto the rows so that when you have a weather ability or let's say you've got that awesome six turn blood moon, you'll actually see how many turns are left because it's really hard to keep track of that if you're not uh, mathematically keeping track of it in your head. And there's no reason not to just show it. Um, another thing you guys have requested that I'm really looking forward to us, to, forward to us doing is you know, the avatars and borders, they're gonna come back into the game. We think you should be able to see them during a match. They're a bit how you identify yourself, so those are definitely also coming in the near future. Uh, there's so much that we're, we're, we're trying to do. This is just a little taste of it, but we're constantly working on making the game feel faster. I know Bouja really fights for you guys. Soon we have the, thanks to him, a small 0.5 one second delay after you let mulligan your last card so you can actually see what you get, which is, it really feels much better and it's because we listen to you and, and, and these little details really add up and they're really important to us. And, and I think slowly as we keep doing these, the user experience is gonna become really top notch fantastic. So keep talking to us, keep sharing with us. This is how we'll get the user experience to the best level it can be. Uh, moving on in that subject, uh, this is sort of, propped up in topics in the past, and that's game boards. And we are going to soon remove the concept of board halves. Uh, hold on, it's not as bad as it sounds. It's also a really good thing, because board halves really, really limit us on many angles. Every time we release a new board, that's two halves that we, uh, that we have to match to every single board that exists, and it was almost crippling us from releasing not only new boards, but really interesting boards. For example, one of the boards that we're looking into doing soon is a tavern board. And that would be really hard to have a bottom half as a tavern and the top half as a battlefield. It would feel really off and really looking forward to removing halves allowing us to do this. Uh, what does this mean though? It means that we are still going to let you see your opponent's board using the following logic. If you go first, you have tactical advantage. You are the attacker. If you go second, you are the defender. It is your battlefield. This means that red player will always have his battlefield for both players. So you'll still be seeing each other's game boards, but you'll no longer have these two halves that don't always match. And this also opens us up to do optimizations in lighting. It allows us to do uh, more, more beautiful boards in general. Uh, really, it's everyone on the team is like super excited by the fact that they can now put more love and make even nicer looking game boards by removing this restriction that the halves would uh, give us. And this sort of like brings us into the sort of the topic of, of vanities in general. And, and so game boards are definitely something we want to start adding into the game again soon. And it sort of represents the, the ideology of how we really want to monetize with you guys. We really want to focus more on getting your support and love through vanities that you can show off and have fun and enjoy the game instead of forcing you guys to spend a lot of money to just enjoy the gameplay at its core. And you know, we've done some changes in that regard to make sure that we can pull this off. And that means that starting soon, we're going to shift a lot of our time to putting a lot more cool, awesome vanities for you guys to equip all over the place. And some of them are gonna be pretty awesome. Really looking forward to that. Now, if you watched our financial presentation, you followed, followed up on Twitter, you are aware that mobile is coming this year. And I have to say, I'm super excited about it. I cannot wait to be able to play phone, sitting on a bus or anywhere. It's, it's already pretty far advanced. I've, I've played it in my hands and I gotta say, I'm so excited. It's incredible. It's going to be the best way to play Gwent just because you can play it anywhere. And that's, that's pretty fantastic. Things like drag and drop are things that we're working on because they're gonna be very important to making the mobile version as awesome as possible. We're, a lot of these user experience and UI improvements are also going to really benefit mobile by making sure that only the key information is visible so that we have a nice flow. Uh, the game boards are also being optimized to look really awesome and beautiful on mobile. Everything's, everything's coming together and, and you know, I really look forward to being able to play it on iOS first this year, but Android as soon as we can after. And I mean, there's just a lot to look forward to and I can't wait for you guys to get your hands on it. Uh, and lastly, I want to spend some time talking about generally our updates. So while we're working on mobile, while we're working on all this user experience stuff, the team has also been really hard at work on the future expansions for Gwent this year. The next one is going to be awesome. I can't wait for it. The theme just feels great for me. I just wish I could tell you what it is right now, but we, we have, yeah, marketing is not gonna be happy with me if, if, 
if I say the name of the expansion right now. But I can confirm that it is going to involve a new faction. So the new expansion will, the next expansion will focus uh, mostly on a new faction. And I'm just really excited to play it. It's going to be different than all the other ones. Just like I said it was going to be on the last roadmap, I think we found the perfect faction for you guys. Uh, and of course, on top of that, we have even more expansions coming for the rest of the year for you guys to be excited. We have our monthly updates where we keep tweaking the game, we keep adding stuff for you guys, we, keeping, we have the seasonal modes that keep coming every month, so make sure to check those out and have fun. And of course, we'll be doing monthly balance patches in between, uh, in between expansions, so you know, Nilfgaard update coming up is a great example of us taking a step back, looking at something that we could really improve. And, and improving the overall experience. And we hope to find that right balance every month where we shake things up just enough that you don't feel completely lost, but the game feels fresh and awesome. And that's all we have for you today. Uh, I mean, there's a lot that's coming in the next year. This was a pleasure to share it with you guys. We're full steam ahead for so much exciting stuff, and I can't wait to share more news with you in the coming months and really uh, keep Gwenting on. I love all of you. Thanks to the development team for all their hard work as well, and you know, see you out there. Now, if you guys have been paying attention on Twitter or our recent financial statements, we've announced we're going mobile. I'm so excited to finally be able to put Gwent into my hands and play it on the throne. <laughs> <laughs> on the throne. Cracks me up every time, although I watched it like 20 times already. But yeah, yeah that's Jason for you. Very humble, very genuine. We love him so much. And I, like he said, the whole development team for all their hard work. All right, to slowly recap, uh, Jason talked about the things that you can expect. He also mentioned some of the things that will be coming with this update. And uh, one of it is actually the reward book, which we can show probably right now, like jump into the game, I have it open. So you guys were asking where the leader trees uh, are and yeah. they are here, they're coming with this update. Uh, what you will see, you'll see pretty much what we see, you will have all of these unlocked. So you'll be able to go through the leaders and once you um, do all the reward points at the end, you will be able to unlock the leader skins. These are simple yeah. recolors of the skins, although they look really, really yeah, cool. They are still cool. Um, so I encourage you to check these out. Like I said, you guys were asking about this, so here it is. Um, of course, the main theme of this update is, of course, Nilfgaard and the Nilfgaard rework. But it's not only. I remember when we were talking, um, the idea was to just look at mainly Nilfgaard, but I know the scope of the overall patch grew very, very quickly. Yes, yes, yes. It's not only Nilfgaard, the, yeah. the patch is bigger. Yeah, the there's a lot of, of gameplay patch. changes and uh, the super anticipated, super requested drag and drop feature, which um, Jason was talking about. But that we will actually showcase in the gameplay segment which we do at the by by the end of the stream pretty much but before that um i think we will go through the changes more or less yeah uh i won't Let's be going through all the small things like changes to the targeting arrows because that's also something that we can actually show in the gameplay segment so i think we will move on. What's also really cool is that Jason mentioned one thing that I managed to kind of sneak into this update is uh, something that some of you were requesting to have a longer mulligan time when you mulligan your last card. So it's uh, half a second, pretty much more time. So you get to see which card is the last one that you draw to your hand when you're mulliganing the final card. So simple as that. Um, so I think we should move on to gameplay changes. Yeah, I'll be, as always, highlighting the card. You'll be talking about it. Of course, the things that we are mentioning here, it's not all of the changes. These are only the chosen ones. Um, this yeah, update yeah, that's, is... that's very important to yeah. mention because it can look like some factions are only buffed or only nerfed, but yes. we, we only chosen some highlighted changes. Yes, this we... is not the whole scope of the patch. Exactly. Um, this is the first one we'll be starting with. Tris telekinesis, yeah, if, I, if I know yes, something, I let's call it coming back to the roots. Yes. People should remember, so mm -hmm. simple but very good change. Tris will take cards from starting deck, like yeah. before. Yeah, starting deck, not current deck like it was to, to this point, so this is a very, very simple change. Moving on, we will take everybody's favorite count. Oh, well. Yes. Favorite or not favorite? So I know this this was a bit confusing because yeah. Caldwell was counting himself. Yes. 
And he won't do this anymore. Yeah, it says very, very simply that every ally turn on turn and move to the road, the highest unit on the battlefield, excluding self. Yes. So, so he won't include himself anymore. A bit more risky to play. Yeah, he's quite the big boy, so it's good yeah. he's not including himself. Points and provision are still the same, but, but the risk is a bit bigger, let's call it. All right, moving on, we have Gimpy Gerwin. Yeah, one uh, one provision. Yeah, small nerf. provision change. Uh, yeah, we see a, we see a nerf here. Here, um, we know this is a card that is played among yes, a lot we, of players. Yes, we, we nerfed so. some damaging neutral cards, so yes. we can just follow follow them now. One yes, the one. next one. Instead yep. of just talking about each one separately, yep. just a bunch of damaging neutral cards. So second one is Ogvist. Ogvist is also Everyone's one favorite provision dragon. change. Yep. That's true. Very small provision change. And after Ogvist, we have the favorite duo Ifrit. Yep. Yes. If I remember. So instead Major nine ten and yeah. his partner in crime Regis. <laughs> Regis indeed. Yes. Also a card talked about. Oh, you actually have two copies on your account. Interesting. Mm -hmm. awesome. Something you see. Good stuff. So yeah, and um, some card that we have to mention yes. that uh, I saw a lot of talk the about. Honorable mention. Honorable mention yes. goes to Gregory <laughs> the Gorgon. The yes. human knight, which, um, yeah, his boost went from 6 to 5, simple as that. Yeah, he's now 10. Four, he's still a yeah. neutral card, he's not yes. a elf card. Guys, don't worry. Step by step, <laughs> take it easy, take I it easy. I think they will worry. Yeah, I don't know if there's going to be some people mad, but don't worry, don't worry, it's fine. Yeah, before he was maybe a bit too strong 11 for, for mm -hmm. 9, now he's 10, but yeah. that wish not always works. So Exactly, Agreed. I think it's fair. So those are the neutrals that we wanted to highlight. I will move on to monsters and we'll start with uh, uh, Eridan. Yes. So Eridan, what's the change here? Uh, we split his ability in mm -hmm. two, so now he got mm -hmm. he, he has two, two charges. Two charges, yes. but he still boosts an ally unit by two yes. and gives it a shield. Before it was four and shield, and now it's two mm -hmm. charges, boost by two and shield, so... Exactly. Yeah, people were talking about Aerodin, that they want him a little bit stronger. We feel like this is a small change, but I think it's... Yeah, we're starting with small enough, steps. Is that, if that won't be enough, we can always, you know, do something more. Um, what about uh, dominance oh, yeah, you can You can show some Ooh, cards Imlarith, with, like Imlarif, let's say. Oh, Imlarif is a very good example, because this is so... Uh, uh, no, no. The, no. the old Sabbath. Ah, the old Sabbath, here we go. So uh, the dominance changed. It's a change we wanted to do for a long time. And dominance uh, won't count units with the dominance ability anymore. Yeah, so they won't count themselves yes. pretty much you need, in this case. You need higher, uh, highest mm -hmm. ally. You, it cannot yeah. be discarded. So you need the highest ally unit, the unit himself with the dominance. Yes. Does not yes, count. Yes, and Imlerif is a really good card mm -hmm. to show it because he also received the rework. Oh. Slight rework. Yeah. Uh, now he's uh, dealing one damage per turn, mm -hmm. always. Yeah. And if you find the dominance, he's dealing two. So it's not like okay. he won't shoot anymore. Okay. In worst case scenario, he's still one damage per turn. Okay. Yeah. That's pretty good. Oh. Should be better. Nice. Um, and one small change are the wild hunt, hunt riders, riders, which are yes. here. And so, uh, power. It's one power and provision. Yeah, yeah. I think it's better. They they don't need to be four. As yes. They do not trigger their dominance anyway. Mm -hmm. So they are three now, and the provision went down from six to five. Simple yes. as that. So they are cheaper. Yeah. Simple as that. Okay. Uh, uh, you want to jump? I'm just into... wondering yeah, if we should jump into Nilfgaard or uh, go through other factions and leave Nilfgaard for the end. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I get I get where you're going with this. So let's jump to Northern Realms. Northern Realms, then. It is. Uh, oh, yes, it's something... Uh, find Queen something worth mentioning that we'll look at some... Uh, weak leaders, let's call it. Weaker leaders, let's Weaker say. Weaker leaders. Well, that we, with statistics, with their win rate, we were not so happy and mm -hmm. we buffed them. So yeah. you can expect buff for some leaders, like... Kalanta. Yeah. So here, provision change from 14 to yes. 16, simple as that. Our ability on the order is pretty much the same, so you play another yes, round faction card from your hand, and then you draw a card. It's simple just provisions. Um, same with the Foltest. 
Yeah, let me just, just yes. click to Northern Let's Realm, go. so it won't be easy. Foltest also Foltest. received the buff. He also yeah. got one provision. Yeah, and one provision. And them events too. we will jump back. Actually, I think we'll be playing against them event today oh, yeah. uh, with our move run deck. So, yeah, them event here. Also yeah. a small change. He's from yeah. 16 to 17. Provision. I hope you are happy you were asking for Northern Realm buffs. Yeah, pretty yeah. much that. Um, Vanagriff's Blade would be the next one. Let me oh, just... Yes. Um, here we go. So, uh, this was tweaked a bit. It mm -hmm. received a deploy ability. Mm -hmm. And it was changed to work with the Knights. So it okay. finally makes sense to play Seldkirk after the Blade and he mm -hmm. will be boosted by two. Yeah. And I also believe in the deck we'll be playing against, the card is included. Um, we also have Dandelion, yes. which is also a card that will be there. Yes. Whoever it's, uh, made these decks made it one <laughs> point. I mean, shout out to Rishik. For yeah, Dandelion this. received a power buff. Yeah, from five. 4 to 5, simple as let's, that. Let's hope it will help him stay on the board longer, especially mm -hmm. with nerfs to the for the damage units. Yeah, I know for some of you these might seem like very small changes, but actually if you think about it, changing provisions and changing power is something yes. that lets you guys balance everything super, super well. And it actually has a big influence on how the game plays. Yes. So, uh, and I want to remind one more time that the, these are not all the changes for the factions. Yes. There are more, more changes in every faction than what we are highlighting. And I also showcase Prince, and Prince Stennis, Stennis, cause Prince have Stennis. Him, yes. cause, uh, He lost some power. Yes, he lost some power from lost, 5 to 2. Yes, he lost some provisions. From 9 to, to seven. 7. Exactly. And, and charges. He, yes, and he gained charges. One additional charge from yes. 1 to 2. I think this is actually quite big. Yeah. This is a buff. This, this is a straight nice buff. buff. Even if, if power went down too, this is a buff. A straight up buff. That's as you can see it in the big preview. Hope he will see some play again. Me too. All right. Time to move on to everyone's favorite faction, being no, no, Scoia'tael. No. 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 no? What do you mean, no? No. What do you mean, no? No. What do you mean, no? Like, look, look at chat. Oh, no. Chat knows that there's <laughs> only one faction. No. Uh, until you're talking about Nilfgaard. No. <laughs> okay. What, what let's, Nilfgaard? Yes, no, let's, no, let's, no, let's no. keep Come it. On. Come on. Come on. So, starting with Efne, she's going down by one provision. By one provision. Yes. Yes. 18 now. Yes. Still a lot. We cry. Still a lot. We cry. Oh, I think this change. This change is what people were waiting for. Yeah, so a nice a, subtle yes. change, but not too subtle. Let's say so. Nerf to Sasentesis, and yes. now she's losing immunity for the duration of both your and opponent's turn. Yeah. So there is still one turn to destroy her. Yeah. So you have more time to get rid of her or to change her power, like lower it, for example. Or even lock her that she won't get immune. Or even lock her so she doesn't yeah. get immune. True that. Yeah. This this yeah. should help. This Interesting. Help. Interesting indeed. All right. Next uh, one. Forest, Forest Whisper. Whisper. Yes. I was kind of sad that this card didn't see much play, so. So you guys decided to decided do to buff change. it, but now it sounds like, hey, I was sad this card is not played. Let's buff it. Yeah. So on deploy, uh, if she's deployed so, on the melee row, she gives a poison? enemy unit poison, and uh, shield on she's order. Played on order on range, she will yes. give an out unit. So it's not will... only that you can play her on range and you get this shield on mm -hmm. order. You can play her on melee, poison something, then move her to the range row and give a shield. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, straight up buff. Mm -hmm. that. There she is in all her glory. Yep. Like how the tree's moving around. Let's um, go to what else do we have here? Mahakam is that guard? it? Is that oh, no, two more. Two more. Yeah, yeah. Mahakam guard change. This uh, are, on the, those are no, no, this is volunteers on the, This is not. It's Jesus. to five. Yes. Okay, my yes. bad. I yes. don't know my Mahakam dudes. Sorry. My bad. Because you're playing only elves. Elves and dryads, to be honest. Yeah. So. Yes. He was counting dwarves on the opposite row, now mm -hmm. he will count dwarves on his own row. Which should work better with volunteers as their yeah. condition, for example, is to have dwarf on the row. Exactly. Yes, I think this will be more syner synergistic. Simple as that. It's straight, like, small change, but yeah. let's hope it will help you. Uh, speaking of dwarves, and Sheldon yes. Skaggs, um, provision went provision, up from 8 yes, to 9. From eight yeah. to nine. He is, you know... He's uh, one, uh, one powerful boy, let's Yeah, say. he's one powerful boy. He's played in the majority of the Squiratel decks. Uh, must include, especially that you buff him like crazy, and then you play yes. him, and then you take down uh, a very powerful yes. unit, and you also play a lot I of I think this was very, very deserved. Yeah. 
Well, if it was deserved, well, I don't, I don't feel like it was deserved, but it's a change. Okay. It's a change. Yeah. But we'll grow accustomed to it somehow. So we can jump to Skellige. Yes, Skellige. Skellige. Oh, oh boy, oh boy. Starting with an earth and going let to me, bust. Let me, let me just... Um, there we so all, go all, right. all favorite Bran. Bran. Uh, the, the most talked about dude. Yes. So, provision. Right, right out provision. One provision. From 16 to 15 yes. seems fair. It's me. not the only change, so... Let's jump, let's do not jump into conclusions. Let's not jump into yes. conclusions. It's like not it. the only one change here. Uh, where is Arnulf? Uh, uh, yes, let me just uh, but regarding skill leader, to... we started with an nerf, but actually we're following up with some buffs. Yes, we want Arnulf to see more play pretty much. Um, yes. So Arnulf is getting to more power. Yeah. So now he's 11. Yes. Uh, and it's then not the only buff to skill leaders. There are two more. There is uh, there is also Harald, who's going up by two provisions. Yes, by two provisions. I don't know two what else in my head. Should be cool. And and uh, my favorite boy is Falblad. Uh, where is the, where is your boy? Your He's serious. also getting a provision. Yes, going up to seventeen from sixteen. Yes. That's yes. That. All right. Let's talk about our favorite. Everyone's favorite. <laughs> Um, the Coral. amount of time that I saw the sentence nerf Coral um, is up to thousands probably by now. And so, um, what's happening here? So sh she's cheaper. Yes, a Let's provision start. from nine. Provision. Which is right, yes. but, but, right? It's but good. It's but good. she also lost charge. Yes, she lost, she also charge. lost charge. Now she's order with only one use. Yes. So discard a card, then draw a card. If discarded card was a special deal to damage to an enemy. Yes. Easy? Easy. No machine gun anymore. No machine gun. <laughs> no machine gun coral. Yeah, I think someone compared it to a machine gun. I yeah, yeah, I heard this term used uh, a lot of times, actually. Yeah, speaking machine of machine gun. guns, the deck we're playing against today, I'm, yes. I'm, I'm excited about that, but it's gonna be... Yes. It's gonna be crazy. Olaf. Olaf. Olaf is small, one provision. Yes, yes. yes. Small, small provision also. change from 10 to 11. Still oh. really strong card. Like, I see people in chat say good and fair. This is really nice to see things that are like good, fair. This yeah. is fair, this is good. Nice job. Um, Svalbard Priest. Yes. This is actually a buff, right? This is a buff. Uh, let me just find this guy. I was just sad, you know, I, I, I liked all the bolts and we were waiting to add him in the game. Yeah. All those monks, still Crimson Curse. Mm -hmm. And he was weak. Yeah. He was weak, so. Went from we gave him uh, one two, more power. Yeah, went from two to three. Uh, ability is still the same. Every other turn on turn and damage the allied units yes. to the right by one, then boost self by Ability two. Ability was not changed. Ability Just power. was not changed. Just the power provision also yes. stays the same. And then something people were asking for. So I will just... Uh, yeah, let's just go really fast. Vabjorn. We added warrior attack to some cards, and this yes. is Vabjorn. Vabjorn, that's this is one Vild of them. This is Vildkarl, if I remember correctly, yes. That's how mm -hmm. you pronounce it? Vild Vild Vildkarl. Vildkarl, yes. Vildkarl, there we and go. And hey, my Protector. And Protector. So, three more warriors for your warrior deck. Yeah, if you're playing warriors. Now it makes total sense. Yeah. Human warrior. Ace likes this. Ace, Ace <laughs> likes this. Yeah. I like how you how you said that. All right, those are the some of the changes for um, Skellige. We went over monsters. We went over Northern Realms. We covered um, Squiatel. I mean that faction, and we are left with uh, Nilfgaard, Nilfgaard, the mighty maybe, empire of Nilfgaard. Maybe we should start highlighting the balance changes first. Okay. And then we will jump into the rework. Okay, so you want to start mm. with balance. Yes. Okay. What what's on your what's on your mind? Which would you like to start with? Emir. Emir? Emir. Let's go with Emir. Uh, let me just Actually Emir? This is interesting card. fact, but Emir had the lowest win rate of all leaders. Lowest win rate of all leaders. Emir yes. van Emir. On every skill level. Emperor would not be happy. But now he should be. And now he receives the buff, so Yeah. A he receives one, one provision, yeah. and card that is moved to the hand is also boosted by two points. Yeah. So. Hope Emir is happy. I mean, on the earth, he's still not happy, but... 
Come on, Ro. Let's my boy is back, baby. <laughs> my boy is back. I'm happy. Baby. I'm happy. Simple as that. Okay. All right. Now we have that. Vilgefort. We're actually talking about Vilgefort today. Yeah, we'll be using him. So Vilgefort received provision buff. Now he costs ten instead yep. of eleven. And actually, he will. I think he will be really good now with one of the leaders from oh. Nilfgaard that we'll show in a moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get to that one. But this is Vilgefort and one nerf. I think people should be happy with, let's call him Traheran. I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly. I, I never know how to pronounce the Nilfgaardians. You know, names. I have a problem with him because I can't freaking spell him ever. <laughs> let's um, call him Traheran. Let me, let me, let me jump through him because I always mix this up. There we go. Here I, yeah. So he also. Van Udefier. Like he, he, from, from, yes. he had a really nice I, I voice read line. It. I won't read it, yes. He had a very nice so, um, um, voice line in Thronebreaker. <laughs> so provision nerf here. For 7 into for 8. Yeah. And this boy. Yeah. This I think boy. that's it from the balance changes that we wanted right. to highlight. Now and let's let's move to the reworks. Yeah, now we One can... One statement here, some of the cards which were reworked will receive a full mill value since their ability changed totally. This will last for three days. Um, like we mentioned, uh, sometime in the beginning of this year, um, cards that cha change substantially, meaning their ability is reworked, will receive full mill. So these cards will see full mill. So yeah, simple as yeah. that. So let's for three jump. days. Let's jump for the, you know. Uh, we're starting with uh, leader. Yes, yes with finally. Morgan. Uh, where is he? Where is he? There he, he is. is. Here. Looking at the sun, the glorious sun. So we liked his ability, but we mm -hmm. wanted kind of more to flesh flesh out the soldier archetype. Mm -hmm. So he lost two provisions. He's boosting by two, but only soldier. Mm -hmm. But there is a lot of soldier engines, so yeah, it's still very valid. He lets you protect yeah. them, and but then when we'll you will use all today. charges, you can put you can move soldier from your deck to the top. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was talking about. Yeah. If you have Vilgefort, you can put Tibor on the top of your deck hmm. and then destroy your unit to summon him. Oh, that's true. Which is pretty neat. <laughs> hmm. And we'll try to do this today. We'll try to do this indeed. Let's maybe, hope we'll find Vilgefort. Maybe we shall succeed, yes. but you never know. Um, Fringilla. Fringilla, yes. or Fringilla, or Fringilla. It's probably good to, to, to mention that we mostly focused on reworking the reveal cards. Yes. So reveal as a whole is... It's, some cards stay, but it's not... It. Yes, but it's a different type of reveal. Yes. It's not like archetype anymore, let's say. We focused on fleshing out some existing archetypes, like soldiers, mm -hmm. like uh, ta uh, yes, tactics, like seizing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like spice. Exactly. Uh, for now, for now, it's dropped. There is no okay. no no reveal archetype. Heard it here first. Simple as yes. that. Um, Fringilla, deploy damage enemy unit by two, increase the number of targets by one for each adjacent mage. Yeah, so something worth to mention because Nilfgaard also has a lot of mages, mm -hmm. and people really liked the mages archetype we started in Northern Realms. Mm -hmm. So, we'll slowly probably try to do something similar yeah. and go with Nilfgaard Mages, and this is like first step towards it. Yeah. Easy. Uh, Swears? Swears, yes. Swears. Uh, boy Swears. So yeah, deploy him on melee and seize an enemy yeah. unit with three or less power. Yes. Uh, I actually played him today to steal a trebuchet from my opponent. Really good card. It's a really good card. You can compare him to the frog from Monsters. Yeah, I call him the engine stealer. But he's one provision more expensive. He's let's yeah, say he's better. He's a ten. You can steal. Yeah. Uh, you can seize a unit and you know use use its ability. Yeah, simple as that. Okay, let's go. All right, hefty so now, Helg. Present for uh, Ardal. Yes. Yeah. The tactic. So hefty Helg is now a gold engine. It starts with a shield. Yes. Uh, it has one charge. Mm -hmm. It's dealing two damage and it gains one charge whenever you play a tactic card. So whenever you play a tactic, yeah, it gets a charge and this charge, when yes. you use it on order, it damages a unit by two. Simple as that. We wanted, you know, to keep that feeling that Hefty Helch is 
big and powerful. Yeah. So, I mean, look at it. It can fire four freaking arrows at once. I mean, that's, oh, yeah. that speaks volumes about it. Um, you can you can take your fire scorpions now. You know, like <laughs> we don't need them anymore. <laughs> Rainfarn of a tre. If I said that uh, Rainfarn is another gold engine. Yeah. Whenever you play a unit with spying, boost self by two. Yes. So yeah. he's a five for a provision. From beta. Mm -hmm. Should help the spy archetype a bit. Yeah. Help the spies. Or like spies by back. Poggers, oh my god. <laughs> um, Arbalist? Arbalist. Arbalist at your service. Yes. Arbalist is a pure tech card. Yeah. That's why he has good provision to power ratio. Mm -hmm. And you can either banish card from opponent's graveyard or from your graveyard. Like hmm, interesting. Yeah, as I'm saying, this is this is a tech card. Tech, tech cards usually do not have a lot of synergy. Yeah. Nice. But you can, you know get his roach mm -hmm. or something else. Yeah. There are a few cards like Cyrus. I like how you have more interaction with the graveyard with this card. Okay, um uh, Pikeman is Alba next. Pikeman, yeah. Someone on Reddit actually got this ability right. Mm -hmm. So he's uh the trebuchet from uh, from from Northern Realms. Yeah. North yeah. yeah. It works on range row, the Alba Pikeman is he was quite successful for me today. I played him a couple times because um, he's in the deck that we'll be playing against their opponent. So yeah, he was pretty much on the turn and he was just firing like crazy, which was yeah. it kind of gave me that Northern Realms uh, vibe to it. So with Morvran, you can boost him. Yeah, his yeah. six power not exactly. so easy to remove. Yeah, super super cool card and really really works well in this deck. But you, hopefully, you'll get to see that. In action. action when we actually do it. I, I, um, I think Manganel. they will, and I think this card will, will see play. <laughs> the good old Manganel. Yes. So on deploy, damage enemy unit by one, increase the damage by, by two, two for, for each spying unit adjacent yeah. to the target. So this is for spies, but this is as you see in retroactive. You play it later, yeah. yeah. And forcer, you need to play first, and then you get value. This is something different. And it's centrally strong because it's bronze card with potential five damage. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you're telegraphing what you want to do. Yes, if you yeah. play a spy next to the unit and you play second spy, your opponent can know what's coming, and it's not it's easy. Kinda like, I it's, know it's, what's going on here. It's not not hard to counter that. You just play yeah. unit between them. Yeah. So both spies are not adjacent to one unit, and then it's only yeah. three damage. Nice. I s hopefully we will see um, Novgaard played a lot more. Being great again, like the Usurper would say. <laughs> um, standard Bearer. Yes. Uh, standard Bearer. I actually used this one uh, for the stream announcement. This is, I really like this art of him kind of telling people, yeah, yeah you know. Let's go, let's go to, let's go to war. So um, what's the ability here? Deploy boosts us by one for each boosted enemy unit. Mm -hmm. Works with uh, Sergeant, yeah. who, who, who is triggered on deployability. He works with Kahir and Guardian Knights. Yeah. For example, uh, well, as we are testing him, he could be pretty high. Yeah. Of course, you know, depends on which enemy you play, but versus mm -hmm. some decks, he can be like 10, po 10 points or something. Yeah. Hmm. Good stuff. Um, Devlin mm. Soldier. If I do, I don't know, if I do it this way, I won't find it. I wanted to be lazy and just type soldier instead of going to the Uh Yeah, deploy, spawn a base copy of this unit and summon it to this row. Yeah. Straight and simple. Mm -hmm. uh, works well with Vrimdi or Virgus. Yeah. yeah then, then you can get a lot with them. Exactly. I don't want to count in my head now, but uh, this is good combo. Mm. All right, I'll take your word for it for <laughs> sure. Um, what else do we have? A recruit. Uh, recruit. So we flashed soldier archetype a bit more. Nilfgaard was lacking it. Uh, the potato man. Yes, our potato man. Boost and ally <laughs> soldier by three. <laughs> this is, is that? Straight and simple. Six yeah, we'll five. be actually playing them in our soldier deck. Um, totally works. The charm works super super well. So. It's still a solid card, I know after Crimson Curse people can say that only 6 for 4 is good, but we also don't want you know, to go with crazy power creep on everything, so... Simple as that. 
Um, ointment. Really cool name for this card in Polish is Majidło. Very easy to pronounce <laughs> if you're if you're an English native yeah, speaker. Yeah, Majidło. I think people should try to pronounce yeah. it. Boost a unit by four if it's a soldier healer first. Again, this really supports. Um, Especially good the with Tibor. Archetype. Yeah. Really good with Tibor. Or some other higher soldiers. Yeah. Especially when he's damaged like crazy. So, no, yeah. check. Majid one chat. Yeah, Majid one chat. Yeah, there's a lot of people yeah. from, from Poland. Yeah, I see Azon. Yeah. 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 Good, yeah, good yeah. Majid one is always good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Majid I really like uh, that Polish word. I think the last one, the Venendal Elite. Uh, Venendal Elite. If I type Elite. It's again something for Ardo. Yes, if go. I remember correctly. Yes. Boost self by one for each tactic card in your hand. Simple. Yeah. One boost for each tactic in your hand. The more greedy you go, the more tactic cards you have, <laughs> the higher he The more greedy you go, the better. Um, I think we missed Calvate in oh, yes. everything that we were doing. Yes. And I saw uh, someone in chat actually true. talking about that's Jan. True. So there he is. So Calvite received two provisions. Now he's 17, yeah. he was 15. Yeah. Yeah. Simple. So Calvate, That's... no, you can you won't be milling Calvate. Um, he only got a boost. This is not a nerf, this is not a <laughs> rework. But we mentioned him at the end because we forgot. Someone in chat wanted to see what happened to Thank Calvate. You. Yes, thank, thank you. Thank you. There you go. Uh, Calvate yeah. was so there. we buffed quite a lot of leaders. This, yes, this, this yes, patch. you buffed a lot of leaders. Um, as you saw, a little bit some of the power level on monsters and on uh, scale get a little bit down, which is what the majority of you were talking about. That I is kind of crazy. Is, someone is asking about Woodland. And uh, uh, Woodland. Woodland himself was not changed, but as we said, those are not all the, of the changes. There are more changes, so let's just wait till tomorrow, and you will see. Full patch notes will be coming tomorrow on PlayGwent.com in the news section. As always, you'll be able to check it out. They will be published when we go live with the update on all platforms, that being PC, PS4, and Xbox One. And what we shall do now is move on to the gameplay segment of the stream. So let's jump into the game. Hopefully, we'll be able to find a worthy opponent for us which might take a little bit, but we will. I'm not sure ah, we'll find someone more think, for you. And I think we found someone. <laughs> um, shout out to Mateusz, who is our opponent. Spoiler. Spoiler. Change here. He Loading screen that. spoiler. <laughs> We're playing against me, so this is very good. We lose, I win. Oh, yeah, we win, again. I kind of win, but we're playing on Ulster's account. So I'll let you, you know, drive the Empire. Oh, we have new pikemen. That's great. Exactly. I, I would like to see Vilgefortz in this hand. You have two like, Guardian Knights. If you won't find Vilgefortz, I will be sad. We redrew our second card. We had half Oops. a second to see what it was. Yeah. We got this. We got this change. It's a oh, small yeah, well, change, yes. but it's a, it's a really nice change. And what you'll be seeing here for the first time is actually us. We're going to be using drag and drop, but first our opponent will play. And I will kind of take you through like what's happening um, when is our turn. So, when Ulster chooses a card, you can see, yes, I, I, I won't play it, especially to show yes. how the raw highlight looks now. This is what Jason was talking about the video, um, kind of making things a little bit better um, when it comes to user experience. And yeah, you get the row highlighted if it's something that should be placed on melee. As you can see, I mean, you yes. have to be freaking blind not to see this. I mean, it's yeah. out there. Oh, hey, let's play him on the let's, range row. Let's play yeah. him on the, on the range oh. row. And, and here is, yes. here's the arrow and try to place it on your opponent's side, go higher. You will have a red arrow. Red means you can't go. Blue means you can't go, which is totally perfect. But you should be playing it on yeah. the middle. I'm just row. playing him because the timer is going. Yes, we you can, can show the card more later. Simple. We take oh, it. We have Roche come out. Look at that power play. Nine points to zero. Ah, yeah, I don't need to that's, that's how we do it. That's how we do it. So yeah, um, everything with like when it's your turn, even the highlights um, for your hand. These things um, mm -hmm. shrinks according to hand size, and also all these like transitions and fading, all these crazy things that I can't even mention right now, are here, and uh, it's a very very. You can see like it's a subtle change. <laughs> I just do it. You played the wrong row and it was highlighted. See, even if you so have the wrong highlighted, sometimes you will play it on the wrong row. 
<laughs> but nobody saw that. We'll cut that. No, um, no, that, that was on purpose. That this was on purpose. This is a pre-recorded segment. This did not happen. That was on purpose. Also, to show come on, know. man. Come on. We're so, still doing this. People are Omega lulling us. So uh, I, mean, I deserve that. Was, that was to, to, to showcase that, you know, we're testing right here. Yes. We're testing if you guys are watching. Yeah. That's to show like people shouldn't do like me and play it on the drum grow when you have highlight. So yeah. Hmm. Don't be like me. Yeah. And don't play cards on the room grows. Look at the highlights. A lot of hard work went into that. Um, also a thing that we won't be able to show because <laughs> we don't have any weather cards. Is something that some players were asking for. Oh. It's like when you have the glyphs here, yeah, which also is actually clicking on. Uh, yes. If you have a weather effect, or if you have Blood Moon, or where, any type of other effect on the row, you will have a counter, a time counter, saying how many turns are left for that it's ability to go on. So if you have uh, Blood Moon, it will it will count down the Blood Moon when it's going down. Oh Simple man, as that. It will get destroyed here with oh, those yeah. engines. Okay. And it's all because of my mistake. <coughs> <My Damn. own. coughs> uh, the event's so weak. Yeah, yeah. People said that NR is not strong enough. Um, well, well. Well, yeah. I, uh, I think they are not so weak as it seems. Yeah. And maybe it's the recent buffs. Maybe it's the buffs. Maybe it's the buffs. It's the Stannis, yeah. yeah. It's Stannis. He's destroying it's tennis, us. Yeah. He's destroying It's not my mistake. New Stannis is pretty okay, good. Okay, we're evacuating from here. Yeah, someone, uh, new Stannis Craig <laughs> Totally. Yeah, but going huh. back. You look at him with the grapes and stuff. If we we'll lose, I'm thanking this on myself. Yeah. Like, well. It's my fault. If you lose, I win because we're playing against me. Okay, Apparently. let's drop this. But I'm still looking for our Pilge Force and we cannot find it. And if we want, it will be a problem. Yeah, like you mentioned, uh, Demavent likes long rounds, uh, so he probably um, will be passing quite quickly, or he will be going cray cray. Um, I already, I already talked to him. Like we're supposed to win since we're the hosts, <laughs> but I don't know. I don't think he got the memo because we're getting destroyed a little bit. Um, I'm thinking of other things that else I can mention here. Um, for those of you asking about uh, Gwent Library Phase 2, uh, which would have the import, import feature, um, it's pushed till early May, so it won't be coming with this update. So if you're asking about that, I can already tell you that. Um, like just Jason mentioned also in his uh, roadmap segment, we are working on the new starter decks and on the new um, tutorials. So get ready for that. That's, that will be coming quite soon. Um, the starter decks was actually pretty cool because um, our development team had the possibility to work with our faction ambassadors and we're working back and forth how to make them cooler and like Jason mentioned to be more fleshed out, feature more of the faction's identity okay. and have less neutral cards, um, which is awesome. Let's drop some cards we don't want to see yeah. in the next round. Exactly. And let's hope we'll find, Vil we'll find Vilgefort. Yeah, cause... ideally would be to yep. find them. If Although, not, we are in problem. Yeah. Nope. nope, nope, and nope. That's not nope. what we're looking for. Okay. Tibor. Will I get the Vilga for it if I will mulligan him? I don't know. It's risky though. Do we go for it? I don't know if it's... I, I don't I like risk. Recently I don't like risk, to be honest. We're going for it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well. Hmm. Hmm. Someone is asking we have to live with it. about like drag and drop. Like you can tell, but like he is dragging and dropping the card. It's like you can, you can yes. tell it. But uh, I will mention one thing. At least we have a proof. It's not pre-recorded. Yes, this is totally. If that would be pre-recorded, we would have this build before in hand always. Yes, always. If not, we would make a magically appear. Yes, and it happens. Um, it's happening because uh, because we. It's not pre-recorded. Yeah. Tell me which card you want to play. I think Serret, we need to remove something. So, uh, what do you want to block with Serret? I'll Either play Odo again. Or, or Vandergrist. All right. See? When you I drag mean, oh. and drop, you get yes. a ghost of the card, and you pretty much are seeing where you're positioning it. 
Because some people are asking kind of like, how is this drag and drop? Well, this is how it looks. You're dragging the card, you're dropping it where you want. I just wanted to play around so people actually see it. Um, so, play it. Uh, who are we blocking? Vandergrift? We're going for Vandergrift. Yeah. Okay, let's go. Let's let's say he's, so. he's, he's more dangerous. Blap. Okay. Back to you. You can you can you can play now. I didn't mind dragging and still, dropping I'm, everywhere. I'm still sad man. Sad man. Oh. Yes. It's always like that. Yeah. When you do the, the you know when you try before it always works and. Yeah. Uh, see that was that was a good play on our side. He had the sword. Yeah. 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 I'm still checking. Let's use our leader finally to protect him a bit. Blop. 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 is still like. So, stay hydrated, bot. You've been live for just over one hour. By this point in your broadcast, you should have consumed at least <laughs> 120 milliliters of water. Maintain optimum hydration. Yes. I, I agree. This is a very smart tip from the stay hydrated bot. Remember, stay hydrated. Yeah, especially if you're doing sports, stay hydrated. It's very important. We don't want anyone passing out. Um, I have an empty cup here. Sorry. Yes. No hydration for me. We can put him at the top, but now it will give us nothing. Yeah, we won't be able to draw to him. Well, I'm sad. I'm sad. Sadness. Maybe, um, 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 uh, hello? <laughs> Headquarters, can we disconnect? Uh, can we open console? Versa on the force, uh, <laughs> underscore 46. Um, he is um, not playing well. He's um, cheating. Can Yeah, yeah, let's get that done. You know, just, yeah, small ban, small ban, please. All right, it's gonna happen. Hmm. I think it's not happening. I think it's not happening. I think it's not. Oh well. Oh my god. Okay. There we go, Visgota. Well, we have a problem. <laughs> or maybe not. No, Houston this, is, this is range one. This is range one. We have a problem. There we go, all the charges. We have a big problem. Blop. 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 Boom. Hmm. Seven, three, two, four, four, five, and nine in the back. That gives us thirty-four to fourteen. Yeah, well, I don't think I don't think I will generate more points than Visagota. Yeah, Visagota actually generates a lot of points, and we don't oh. really have a way of getting rid of him right now. That's life, you know. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, especially True. if you do plays like me. Yeah. But at least I'm taking this one on myself. It's not Pavel's fault. Yeah, not, not my fault. I'm, I'm, I'm the opponent. I, mm, mm, or maybe it should be like, it's your fault. Yeah, it's my fault. I can totally take the blame. It's got the generating points. Yes. Yes. Oak champ. This is like the Maven out of control. It's getting crazy. Yeah. Blup, blup. There we go. I don't like this. Yo, Mateusz in the back, you stop him, man. <laughs> just, just, stop just, 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 just chill. <laughs> just pass. Uh, we're supposed to um, win. <clears throat> um, not sure this happening, but I like how you have all the all the fives on the row. Oh, yeah, if your opponent has Igni, you know. that would kind of hurt. Nobody plays Igni. No, no, they sometimes they do. They surprise mm -hmm. you with that stuff. Yeah. You never know. Oh, we got this. Look at this. 48 points, 24. Totally the best. Oh. Well, so far we're winning. I mean... Slow and steady. Let's just hope that I was didn't get enough practice with this. So... I mean, we're Fine. still keeping with them, Avendi. It's, it's yeah. not that bad. Big catapult incoming. Look at all those soldiers you'll be boosting. Stand your ground, and we got an achievement unlocked! There we huh? go. Play a maximum number of units into <laughs> any single row. So we filled the row. Yes, I, I saw before someone was saying I was not playing a lot with Thronebreaker leaders. <coughs> Sorry, but this is actually my work account, so I'm not playing on this beside streams and stuff. Ah. I have my private one where, where, I, where I play. 
That's what I do. I also have one yes. for streaming. I give it to people so they can beat well, us. Most of team members do this. Yeah. yeah. So it's not like I was, you know. So what are we restoring to base power? Well, this is five points. And this is probably the best target. Yeah. Let's do this. The Nordlings hate with Easy but I'm win. Actually, oh, Easy win. I hope so. I Easy mean. win. Let's show him what real art is. Okay. Easy. And now he plays a million charges. Yes. <laughs> who designed this faction? Like, what? What's going on here? I don't know. Who who built these decks? What that's, is, that's another question. Who I, need built to, these decks? I need to find out who built those decks and why my Vilgefortz is not here. But we still got this. And we got an achievement again. Have a win streak of three in uh, any multiplayer game. We're going hot on it. On also, a important thing, you have the GG button now in the middle. Oh, oh wait, can we go back? True. Can we go back? Can we go back? You have it in the middle, and when you click next, it's still there. It's still there. <laughs> it's totally there. So if you forget to GG, like I sometimes do, because I'm a forgetful uh -huh. person. Uh -huh. Forgetting. No, 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 I really forget. Mm -hmm. I was like, you know, quickly, quickly, someone comes to my desk, I'm playing Gwen at work, it's not it's not something you're supposed to be doing at work, and then, you so, know, and you click and you're like, oh man, I forgot to GG, and then it's like, oh, he did it on purpose, and yeah. yeah. yeah you just need to remember, Pavel is not a GG person. I GG everybody, because mm -hmm. I love the mm -hmm. whole Gwen community, and I'm so. never salty. Even <laughs> when people play list decks, I even GG them. <laughs> See? That's how I'm. 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 I'm a, I'm a good so guy. Awesome. I'm, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a good guy. Yeah. So I think that's that. We covered everything. That's we it. had Jason talk about the future of Gwen. We went over some some of the changes coming with patch 2.1, aka Novgard update, aka the patch which is coming out tomorrow. Simple as that. I say simple as that. I'm still quite I'm, too much. I'm still sad about this, you know, Alba Vilgefortz combo. Yeah. Well, it's pretty neat, but people can try it. You can have it all. tomorrow. You can have it all. You yeah. can check it out tomorrow. You can try it tomorrow. Maybe you'll have more luck than me. Yeah. Also important, new season is also starting tomorrow. Oh, it's Viper yes. season with a brand new seasonal mode, which is spicy as hell. So you have to check that out for yourself. And I think that is that. And I think we will say goodbye now so I can go home on my bicycle and go to sleep like an old man. Anything I, you want to add? I will just go home. Okay. I will go home to sleep. We will catch you next time and have a wonderful evening, morning, night, depending wherever you are. Stay safe. Um, remember, Skeletal is the best faction. And um, yeah. Check out the patch tomorrow. It's going to be awesome. And I shall wave now to the camera and go to sleep. Okay.